61 in Aurora, Texas. You know, where they buried the being in, in a cemetery or whatever. Uh, uh, yeah. well, this is Aurora in, in the in in the 80s. In the, in the, uh, way before that. Yes, many years. Uh, now, I, I, the book that I told you, I saw, has all of the ones that we know about, Cape Girardeau, Missouri, and so forth. Uh, I can only speak to, I can speak to Roswell because I interviewed, and he didn't speak very much, the mortician, uh, Glenn Dennis, uh, uh, because he didn't speak very much just before he died. The mortician, um, Glenn Dennis in Roswell was asked for six children's caskets for children. So his first uh, words were, where was the accident? What accident with six children? Well, six children's caskets were the ETs, the, the beings. And he told me that he went to the staging site, he saw the, the, the tents, he talked to a nurse, he saw everything. He told me that in an interview before he died. And this is the mortician, the, the man that was taking care of the bodies. Walter Hott, I talked to him. Uh, he was the head of the museum at the time. Uh, he was running, and he was the information officer that had to put it out to the world, you know, that they had crashed UFO and then he had to take it back. I spoke to uh, uh, Dennis Balthazar, people involved in Roswell. That's before, way before, I talked to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. San Antonio has the location, four witnesses, it has artifacts, which means pieces of metal, and it has everything. It has everything. What people don't understand is that it was not part of Blue Book. Because Blue Book didn't happen until later. But because Remy Baca worked for the governor of the state of Washington, her name was Dixie Lee, she was the head of the Atomic Energy Commission. Washington has the plutonium. That's where the plutonium comes from, Washington State, for the bombs. She was the head of the Atomic Energy Commission, and because Remy Baca was Democratic and got her elected as governor, she showed him the file on 1945, opened it up, closed it, and that file is in the Atomic Energy Commission files, which nobody, not even the president, can get to. It is not in Blue Book, it is not in the Air Force, it's in the Atomic Energy Commission mm -hmm. files, but it was a thank you for electing me governor. She opened up the file, and she, he saw the San Antonio, and she closed it. So the, this testimony is, is incredible if people bother to read the book, which is in Spanish too, in French, mm -hmm. Spanish, Italian, and Japanese, and, and also Japanese. Por así ábrelo, esto para que salgamos los dos, por favor. Um, three weeks ago, uh, military in the United States declared, uh, I know that, uh, did you know this guy? He, uh, oh, yes. Is that which one Stephen Greer? Yeah, no, no, Stephen Greer is here. But this is the military that revealed that he worked for the Pentagon, and he is a high military. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. I, I, um, it's the new story. Yes, right. The problem is this: that everybody, like Lou Elizondo in this military, mm -hmm. becomes media stars. Um, they get an agent, Hollywood, mm -hmm. and then they speak to the world, and everybody wants to interview them. But Stephen Greer did something else. He put 10 of these men together. They are 10, they're not one, and they told of their involvement with black projects, beings, and UFOs. Mm -hmm. And I prefer to listen to men that are heroes, that are upset, their families have been destroyed, 
They're, they are, you know, their whole families, they've been discredited, they've been threatened. When someone comes out like this and is not threatened, but has the blessing, the blessing of the government, say, yeah, go, go, you can talk, then I, I begin to wonder why. That, right. that, yeah, that why? It, is it a distraction? Are we supposed to be looking at him when there's 10 real situations because uh, Stephen Greer had 10 men whose lives were destroyed. They are not happy. This man now will become, everybody wants to interview him, he yeah. will become a movie star. Yeah. I have to look at that uh, as a journalist. The agenda be behind why you speak interests me more than what you say. I have to ask you, why are you speaking? What? Colonel Corso, you know, with Colonel Corso, came out and spoke. But they did not want him to speak in the United States. So they put a lawsuit against the book. So his lawyers will not allow him to speak because he was telling the truth. So I and the journalists have brought him to Italy twice, to San Marino, so he could speak to the world. And he told everything in Europe, not in the United States. Because he was, he worked for the Pentagon, his agenda was his grandchildren, not money, but he was, uh, closed, they, they shut him up immediately. And uh, he is a real hero, because now I understand that the pieces, the fiber optics, the high tenacity fibers, the transistor, everything that came out of those th crashes, they're not going to throw the craft in the trash. And they're going to say, oh, this is a piece of garbage. They're going to go in there and see what the technology is. That technology went everywhere. It went to the Air Force, it went to the Army, Colonel Corso's Army, and it went to the Navy. So what the problem is, is the secret is there because of that, not because of the aliens or religion or, you know, people are afraid. But when you find out, like this man said, that they have taken the technology, then it becomes a matter of money and economy and power. And the United States has all that. The back engineering was done in the United States. So it's very difficult for me to think they are going to say, we did this, we took this, we, you have now uh, night screening devices. And this is interesting because Colonel Corso said they had a lens from the beam. They peeled it off his eye and they could see the whole room. They could see the room through the lens, so they made night screening devices that he adds, I have the video and audio, that they used in Vietnam at night because of the lens of the being. Everybody says that the beings have these big eyes. No, those are, those are lenses. They collect light. And as I'm looking at that, and I think of the Santilli footage, uh, the autopsy, the famous alien autopsy, mm -hmm that they closed down, where they peeled the eye, the, the lens off. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. You have to use discrimination and know there's truth in everything. And sometimes something that's real, they're going to debunk, or they're going to say is not true. But there's pieces that are true. And I asked Colonel Corso about that, that footage, and he goes, Paula, he said, we had the eye, the, 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 that's what we had. We think. Yes. It, he said, I had that. I took that to Monsanto, American Computer Company. He told me the companies. And I said, but Colonel, is there a record? He goes, no, no, I went with an envelope full of money. So there was never any paper trail. He was not lying. Colonel Corso was the head of the intelligence in Rome when he was 26 years old. He has no reason to lie. He does have reason to tell the truth. 
he had three grandchildren, three boys. Mm. And he said they deserve to know. So I think the question that everyone must ask is why are you speaking? Do you want to make money off of a book? Do you want to be famous? No. Do, you, do you want to be a distraction? Mm -hmm. If you're a distraction, people are looking over there when something is happening over here. Mm -hmm. A war may be happening over here and we're looking at UFOs over here. We may be a scandal over here and we're looking at UFOs over here. Do you understand how that yeah. works? Yeah. Uh, Paola, last question. Uh, in your perspective, what do you think will happen with all of this? Nothing. I'm sorry. No, no, no. no. What will happen is that it's a distraction. I think. People will wait for the next New York Times article or next government you know, panel, if the government, and there is, you know, Marco Rubio and mm -hmm. the other woman, they want money for weapons to shoot down UFOs because the planet, the planet exists on war. And if you have no enemy, like Werner von Braun said, the famous rocket scientist, told Carol Rosen, and Carol Rosen spoke to me, She's a very good friend. She had said, Werner von Braun said, when they can't find an enemy, they will find the, uh, the UFOs. And therefore, if you go and you're having a panel at the government, you say, we have an enemy, give us money to get, then what we're looking at is the automatic, the automatic demonization of UFOs. And if you have a brain, you know that if they were hostile, they would have done something in 1945 when we exploded the atomic bomb. They wouldn't have been waiting until 2024. Why? What's, what did we do in 2024? We did something in 1945. We did something in 1945, that's why Trinity is so important that disturbed the level of dimensions. Mm -hmm. You cannot explode a bomb and have it not affect different dimensions. And so it, it was, what, what did this planet do? What, it's going to affect us. What did this planet do? You know, uh, in 1945, the bomb in 1945 set a, a historical landmark Nothing in 2024. Why would they? Why would you shoot at UFOs in 2020? There's nothing. They just fly around. I mean, mm -hmm. and I asked. This will interest you. I asked Jacques Vallée. I said, Why? Uh, why um, are people having sightings? Why do they see UFOs? And he goes, It's a conditioning. It's a conditioning, Paula. It's to get your attention to raise consciousness. Mm -hmm. So you're looking all the time. And, and you can't predict when you see them. They decide. You don't decide. And when it happens, it brings you out of a human consciousness into a, a space consciousness, a, a collective. So I said, Jack, that makes sense. It's, it's to get your attention, isn't it? And he said, yes. There's no other reason. Oh, you know, just get your attention. Switch you out of your everyday life. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. I thought that's mm -hmm. beautiful. But it's a beautiful explanation. Paola, thank you very much for this conversation. Uh, uh, I hope that I could see you again in the future. <laughs> I could see you again too. Thank, thank you. you for helping me. No. And you don't have you. to mention. It's a pleasure to me. And also, thank you for your part in putting together the puzzle. <laughs> we need to connect the dots. We need to understand what is happening. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank you. Uh, thank you uh, very much for this conversation, uh, Paula.